and welcome. Today's video has been totally inspired by my good friend Carl Jacobson while watching one of his videos that I think he put up a little while ago um, regarding his process for making a three-cornered bowl and it intrigued me I've never done one I've been meaning to and it just lit that little fire in my belly and I thought right I'll have a go. So I had a practice and I made one uh, as a practice piece just to go through the method and I was quite pleased with that so I thought I'd share my method with you and for today's project I'll be using this piece of cedar of Lebanon which I think I picked up from my mate Martin Saban Smith a couple of years ago in a big piece which I've cut on the bandsaw. A couple of little hairline cracks which shouldn't cause a problem but I've just put in some thin CA glue to those, cut it into a five inch cube and I'll show you my method. Before we go and do that, John Clothier, who I'm sure a lot of you know, has rebranded his channel if you like to reflect the sort of artistic route in which he is really going. Uh, he produces some lovely pieces. I'll put a link to John's channel down below, pop across and see the lovely stuff he does. Very, very innovative. That's John Clothier. And before we go, William Hunt, friend of mine on Facebook, very talented turner, down, down in, the, in the West Country, down in Somerset, and he does some really nice stuff, and some big stuff as well. He's just started, a little while ago, a YouTube channel, and uh, the latest offering is a great big 24-inch chestnut burl, or elm burl one of the two. However, it's a lovely piece, really is good, and he talks you through what he does and his thought process, etc. So pop across to William's channel and have a look, and I'm sure you'll enjoy what he has to offer. That's William Hunt. Okay, let's get on with this piece. Okay, so what I'm doing here now, uh, I'm just using the spindle, nothing on the spindle at all, and also taken the point out of a live center. So now what I've done here, I've had a little play about and I'm gonna, there's a knot here, so that's gonna form part of the base. So all you do is slot it in there and bring up your tail stock and wedge it in the hollow center. Now at this stage, I might be wrong in saying this, I don't think it matters too much if it's all in line but I like to get it as near as possible and there are various ways of doing that. You can mark on your tool rest where the corner is and how far away it goes from the tool rest and if it's in line so you're basically set up for what you need to do and once you're happy with that just tighten up and then you have a basically a friction drive if you like but the the hollow centers are pinching on the corners. I'll be using uh, bowl gouges, um, basically a 3 8 bowl gouge uh, parting tool. I'm not going to use any carbides and we'll just see what develops. And the main thing is to get a basic shape around here, form the tenon as soon as possible and then reseat the tenon in a forge or chuck and then centre things up because as you turn then everything will be in line. Now what I've done here, I've reversed it, I've formed my tenon on this end here and put it into my four jaw chuck. Before I actually tighten down the chuck, I centred it as well as I could using the live centre and then tightened up the chuck jaws and moved in slightly with the tailstock 
clamped it down so that will give me some extra support because all this is going to be waste at the end of the day so I shall work my way down there with the aid of the tail stop as long as possible. What I have to do now is finish the outside profile. I've got to bring a smooth curve up to the points which will be the tips of the wings of the bowl. So now we've reached the basic form of the outside. There's a very slight flat spot there which indicates it's not completely concentric, but I don't think that's a big problem. There's a little crack appearing here as well, but hopefully that won't cause too much problem. However, the basic shape has been formed. What I have to do now is refine it, get rid of the ridges, etc., and make it nice and smooth, and then I'll sand it, and I'll use the Hope Pro Sander an inertia sander to sand the outside and then like we do with any other bowl or form like this is finish the outside put a finish on it and then I'll hog away the inside that's turned out quite nicely. So that's the outside finished. Now we'll get to hogging out the middle. didn't turn out as I wanted it to but as usual uh, fail or succeed I'll still post the video up until the tenon actually gave way I had a little catch on the corner here but on closer examination I haven't been able to find the other piece actually uh, there was a crack here as well this is not an excuse I mean, I had a little catch, but it, it, it shouldn't have done that much damage. It was because I was going in very, very carefully. But there is actually, I can't actually show it to you really, there is a crack. There are little radial cracks here. And they're getting quite deep, actually. And there was one across the tenon, and it just took it. So, 
these things happen. What I will say is, when you're turning like this, you're well out of the line of fire, so when you're hollowing, if you do get a catch and it flies off, there's less than half a percent of a chance of it actually even catching you anywhere, so you're quite safe, in my opinion. However, um, it looks nice on the outside. <laughs> The practice piece I did, um, the first one I did, that's really how it was going to end up looking. Maybe not quite as uh, coming over here, but nevertheless that's the idea. So I've showed you the method, which was basically the idea of the video. So I hope you got something from it, um, and it does show that anything can happen at any time. So always make sure you're wearing full well, face. Thanks very much for joining me, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you very soon, hopefully with a completed project. Cheers now.